OK. We have our piece chucked into the micro arc. We've got the tool in the spindle and measured. So first operation is just that first couple of inches. And I've learned, one of the things I've learned through this project is that I wanted to remove material further away first, because if I cut his skinny little legs at the, at the, all the way down by the chuck, then it creates a lot of um, chatter when the material is unsupported. And so I'm starting kind of out at the end and I'm gonna work that the first couple inches and then I'll do the midsection and then I'll do the base section and then I'll kind of hop around a little bit with a smaller tool just to remove little bits of material for the ball end mill. Now with any uh, first time run through a program, I'm just gonna walk this thing in and cycle start and kind of give it a looky-loo and make sure everything looks good. And I'm running this pretty conservative today because I have such a stick out on that workpiece from the micro arc. If I had a tailstock, I'd be running it a bit harder. And I'm still just going to walk it up real slow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't hear any chatter yet. Yeah, I don't either. I'm actually running a little faster than I had originally planned. As part of the planning on this job, I deliberately broke up bulks of tool paths into different files so that I could check progress as we go along. As you can see, we've done the first three and a half inches or so of roughing, but only to a certain depth because the tool doesn't stick out of the tool holder deep enough to do all of it all at once. Now I've got the file queued up, so we're gonna do that first inch and a half right around kind of his head and face and beard area with the same tool but I've constrained the tool path down to that first little bit just so we don't have any collisions. So now I'm gonna fire that off. Just like before, I'm gonna walk it in nice and slow for this operation. I'm gonna let it eat for a minute. Okay. I, might, I might turn it up. This is going to take longer, right? I don't think so. I mean, we're just doing that first, like from here that way. So okay. Oh, okay. I expect it'll be quicker than before. Okay, now that we've got the first couple inches cleared off, I'm gonna go ahead and get around his ankles and everything. 
So this roughing strategy is just gonna work for a while and bulk out kind of the rest of the material and get us pretty close to that model that we're after. So just like before, I'll walk it in nice and slow just to make sure everything checks out and we'll be in business. And I'll probably be able to run this one up a little harder since it's so close to the chuck. So right now I'm at 100% of feed rate, which is about 40 inches a minute. And I'll probably roll that up a little bit higher as we get into the cut a little bit more. So far, we've been using a 3 8 inch end mill in a set screw style tool holder to bulk out most of the material. Pretty standard setup, and I was able to reach most of the material. However, if you look at the part in process, on the back of his legs, there's actually a bit of material that's left because the tool holder, if I go any deeper, will collide with the jaws of the chuck on the micro arc. Therefore, for this last little bit, I'm going to switch to an ER16M tool holder that has a skinnier shaft on it and I've got the tool pulled out longer than is advised but I'm just going to be removing a little bit of material on the end of this job just to clean up space for the next tool which will be a flat eighth inch end mill that'll come in and clean in some corner pockets and kind of get some extra material out of the way so that ball end mill has constant surface engagement the whole way through. For that eighth inch end mill, both for the flat and for the ball, I'm actually using an AB Tools AccuHold just to stretch that tool out a little bit. So this has a 3 8 inch outer diameter and an eighth inch inner diameter. There's a, a myriad of options on tools like this, but this is my tool of choice for getting down into the deep cavities of things. For example, when I want to get in between his toes, I need to get this all the way down in here without colliding the the collet or anything else on the stock or the chuck. So I only have one of these, so halfway through this job, I'm gonna to have to switch this out for the ball end mill and re retouch off my tool length. But this is a kind of a one-off part, so that's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Ultimately, we're waiting for it to get into the meat of those, you know, the behind the legs, the big flat spot. That's pretty solid. We just gotta, now I just need to get in there with a quarter inch or an eighth inch tool and remove some material, but. Yeah. the material all roughed out and ready to rock and roll. Now it's down to the finishing pass. I have an eighth inch ball end mill and we're going to do a two thou step over on a rotary tool path all the way around this thing and we're going to spin the A axis all the way up to 855,000 degrees by the time we're all said and done. So let's load the tool up. All right, I'm going to go ready. This file's very, very large. Yeah, this is it. 
This is it. Let's try it. This is it. Once it gets done, we're done. Yep. Nice. It's on platform shoes. <laughs> okay. The machine got done. It took a long time, so I actually just went ahead and let it run overnight. Uh, it got done last night sometime, and we're back in the morning, and we're gonna take a look at it. So let's check it out. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this thing out, get a nice close look at it. Oh man, put some stink on it. Oh yeah, money. Sweet. Ultimately, this has been a really good project, a fun project, and I'm glad you were along for the journey. Uh, I did some math. It took just over three hours and 45 minutes to rough out the material. And remember that we staged it all the way down to minimize chatter and kind of deflection of the material. And then it took almost 10 hours to surface this. The surfacing was done with an eighth inch ball end mill. I was doing a 2000 step over 40 inches a minute. Uh, and I actually slowed it down a little bit to about 80% of that 40 inches a minute before I left last night just because I wasn't going to be here watching the machine and I figured if it took a little longer, not a big deal. So it took about 10 hours to uh, do the final surfacing of this. And I also want to take a quick second to note that this started its life as an STL file that I downloaded from a 3D printing website. I ultimately picked this version because I like the geometry. I have another version that I did that was, came from a step file. And so the, the tool path was a lot cleaner. There's a little bit of chatter, but that just has to do with the way I was working the tool. But I think this is just kind of a boring geometry. So I went with this as my final product, which ultimately resulted in a little bit of faceting kind of here on the, especially the sack, you can see it. And then what is supposed to be fur on his coat looks a little weird, but all in all, I'm pretty excited. I think my daughter's gonna be pretty excited. The next step will be I, to cut soft jaws so that I can hold this thing in a vise. I'll stand a CNC vise up on its side, cut off the feet, you know, get a nice surface on it, drill and tap two holes in the feet, and then I'm gonna put it on a base to where it hangs over the edge and has a little hook for a stocking holder. All in all, this has been a fantastic project and I'm glad you are along for the ride. Have a good day and enjoy making things. See you later.